Immediately following the events of the last part, Izuku now finds himself in the office with Nezu, who just asked him what he thinks about this. Izuku from here absolutely flabbergasted, goes on and pretty much tell him yes to everything, and this is where Nezu proceeds to explain that not only is he going to be attending UA, but he's going to be receiving special training. Nezu tells him that he sees him having the same potential as somebody like All Might, and not only is Izuku going to go to their school, but his expeditization process, or like the process of getting him from here to becoming an actual hero, is going to be insanely supercharged. Izuku doesn't have to go through a full three years of this school. In fact, they're going to make sure that Izuku becomes a pro hero and a top 10 one within two years. He can promise him that. After hearing this, Izuku would be like, don't you think that's doing a little much as Nezu would say absolutely not boy I mean sometimes things just have to be done for the greater good and you will be saving many lives don't you think that that's more worthwhile than staying here in school with a couple of friends Izuku after hearing that would think to himself that yeah saving people is more important than other stuff so he would pretty much look at Nezu and say he's gonna be happy to work with him Nezu would go on to smile and tell him that the next day he's or actually not even the next day what is he talking about they could do it today today he's going to be meeting all the teachers in UA they were supposed to have a meeting about an hour ago but Nezu was a little busy speaking with him Izuku and Nezu from here would make their way towards the teachers lounge like where they have their little meetings and Nezu goes on to introduce Izuku all of the heroes there are pretty much like ready to like praise Izuku and tell him that like they're they're expecting great things from him except except expect expect but nah except for Aizawa who would pretty much look at Izuku and be like hey kid all right so you're the one with the massive potential well, I hope that you don't disappoint us because I'm going to be your homeroom teacher. From here, Izuku, after hearing that, he would think to himself that this guy seems like a bit of a stick in the mud. But whatever, he's going to be teaching him all the things that he needs to know. So he better put a smile on and shake his hand. So he'd be like, well, I'm happy to meet you, Aizawa. My name is Izuku Midoriya. But before he can finish saying that, Aizawa would say, yeah, I know your name, kid. Sit down. As from here, Izuku would go on to sit and just be like, all right, I'm going I'm to just stay quiet. As, you know, we would pretty much just have a meeting go down. They all are explain their roles. And Izuku from here would be told that the very next day, Izuku's going to have to come in for some training because week, school's going to start in a week. So instead of Izuku having that week off to just do whatever he wants, he's actually going to have to be in the school, literally training with the pro heroes off rip. So instead of having the first crazy event that Izuku takes part in be like the heroes versus villains training or even the USJ, Izuku's going to have to straight up fight a full on pro hero. And the first one that he's going to get to is Ectoplasm. The reason that Nezu would choose Ectoplasm is due to the nature of the fact that, I mean, Ectoplasm 1 can make clones which won't get hurt. So Izuku's free to use his destruction energy and actually go full throttle on them. And B, Ectoplasm's able to produce a bunch of them, meaning that Izuku's going to be able to go on and on and on. And not only is he going to be fighting ectoplasm but he's also going to be fighting robots now these robots are also going to be trying to absolutely destroy him and it's not just going to be one two and three pointers but there's going to be like 10 zero pointers that are all just trying to absolutely destroy him as izuku just going through these training grounds and trying his best to not get hit nezu pretty much tells him to try to take them all out as fast as he possibly can and well obviously izuku could just charge up his hakai energy and pretty much cause everything around him to be destroyed he doesn't exactly want to destroy millions and millions of of dollars of property damage so izuku decides you know what i'll take them all out one by one plus this gives me a better chance to practice my control over the destruction energy in a better way this way instead of izuku being able to shoot these hakai like like these just destruction beams that would normally like if making contact with somebody would just instantly eradicate them from existence instead it would eradicate that specific part from existence so let's say that you have a gun and you're holding it up to izuku and he shoots a Hakai energy at your hand, your hand is gone. It's never coming back. Like, just say bye to that hand. That's the thing that Izuku was training towards during this time. And that's exactly what would happen. Izuku, using his quirk, would fly through the surrounding area as he would destroy clone after clone after clone, rushing through a bunch of robots as he would pretty much grab one and crush its head into a size of a ball. As he, using that ball, he would throw it right into the chest of one of the ectoplasms, forming a hole into it. As it would fall down onto the ground, turning into sludge, Izuku shooting off towards multiple multiple as he would begin doing a, a vegeta style key blast barrage at just a bunch of robots and ectoplasms until eventually nothing would be left 
It'd be at this point that Aizawa would be extremely stunned because not only did he actually try to erase the kid's quirk to no avail, but this kid's abilities don't even seem to be a quirk. There's something completely out of whack. This goes against all nature that they currently have, like th their, their whole like thoughts about how quirks work. He might be the first evolution of quirks that like is just different, you know? And that's just what they're thinking about. But honestly, this isn't exactly a quirk. This dude is straight up just the reincarnation of Beerus. But again, nature... Uh, I mean, nurture over nature, not nature over nurture this, for this specific video, obviously, right? But anyways, this would eventually accumulate to Izuku himself meeting All Might around the third day of his training. And once he would meet All Might and once All Might realizes that this is the same kid, he would be just delighted. He'd be like, huh, so it's you, young man. I see that you did manage to get to Yue. Nice to meet you. From here, Izuku, you know, going to have a handshake with All Might and pretty much say that he's so happy he gets to go one on one with the number one hero, telling All Might to hold back a bit, as All Might would say, of course I will. Going on to put on these 500 pound weights on both of his arms and legs, as Izuku would say, you know, I was thinking you were just going to put push yourself back i don't think you're gonna be needing that and all might would say well just in case you know i don't want to hurt you young man placing his hand on izuku's shoulder as he would go on to say that he's ready as izuku after hearing that would think to himself all right but you better make sure you don't pull your punches if i start getting ahead of myself as all might from here would get into his stance and before all might could even realize that izuku would have blitzed from his field of vision literally leaving an after image punching all might in the gut literally almost like almost ripping through his stomach from here all might would be sent flying through 17 buildings ultimately crashing onto a wall and just coughing out a bunch of blood izuku after seeing that would freak out like never before thinking to himself that he he punched him with like 10 percent of his strength like he didn't mean to as all might is just knocked out and it's not even all might anymore now it's small might right so small might is sitting there and izuku's just going I'm so sorry. Like, Izuku straight up stays at All Might's bedside, refusing to leave, no matter what anyone told him. And, like, they even threaten expulsion, or Aizawa at least. And Izuku's like, no, like, I'm gonna stay by All Might's side. So, right after All Might wakes up, Izuku just profusely apologizes, telling him that he is so unbelievably sorry that this never should have happened. As All Might goes on to explain that he had no idea that there was somebody out there who was this much stronger than him. And he, Izuku would say that he didn't mean to, he really was holding back. All Might hearing that would think to himself that if this kid was holding back, he could probably blow up the planet with a punch. And Izuku would say he probably could. In fact, one time they went to the Grand Canyon, his mother and himself, for a little trip. And Izuku accidentally ended up making the Grand Canyon a lot deeper than it was originally. As All Might would say, that was you? And Izuku says yeah mom didn't exactly want us to go on the news to talk about that and all might would just be like well kid you have uh, quite a future out ahead of yourself how would you like to inherit my quirk all might would say to izuku as you know recovery girl would be in the room and izuku says what are you talking about all my quirks can't be passed on right all might would look at him and say well not usual not normal quirks but mine mine can as izuku upon hearing this would think to himself that it'd probably be great but if he needs a successor he actually might know somebody who would be even better than he is. Somebody who's probably going to be a better hero than he's going to be. I mean, at least have more of a swagger than he does, right? As from here, All Might would say, who are you referring to? And Izuku would pretty much say that the student he's talking about is Katsuki Bakugo. He's also going to be enrolling in UA and he's his best friend. He's been training with him ever since he can remember and if he was to inherit the quirk, he'd probably be the number one hero in about a week. As All Might hearing that and reviewing the tape of what Bakugo could actually do against the robots, he would actually decide that that's a great idea. This dude, Bakugo, straight up destroyed 120 robots, and his zero pointer for his specific section was also blown to smithereens by Bakugo. So All Might just thinks to himself, I mean, two insanely overpowered students? Why the heck not, you know? So that's exactly what happens. Bakugo this time ends up being the inheritor of one for all. And Izuku, well, he's just fine with that. But after all of this stuff would happen, as you guys could guess, a little bit more training would take place with All Might pretty much supervising Izuku and all the heroes realizing that they're not exactly going to be a threat to him. They would kind of just train Izuku as best as they can, eventually focusing more on rescue training and like general like hero patrolling and stuff like that. To which Izuku would actually go on to meet Endeavor who would help him with that since All Might is kind of out of commission right now but 
After all that would be said and done, the first day of Yue High would finally come around. And because it's been long enough, Bakugo has had some time to train alongside Izuku, you know, after he would train with the heroes at Dagoma Beach, as he would have been training with All Might mainly, right? And so when the first day of school finally comes around, Bakugo and Izuku would be dropped off at the front at the front gate. As Izuku would be eating a McGriddle, Bakugo would be having like a hash brown in his hand, and they walk inside with Bakugo saying that that food could have been a little fresher. Bakugo with Azuku just being like, yeah, you're right about that, but it always hits the spot. As Bakugo says, yeah, it always hits the spot of making me feel like I'm gonna die. That food's terrible, but I needed something in my system. As from here, Azuku would say, ah, whatever, we're gonna have professional lunches here, Bakugo. Aren't you excited? Bakugo would say, I'm excited to become a number one hero and prove that I don't have to be stronger than you to take that spot. As Izuku would laugh and say, I'm sure you will, Bakugo. As right after that would happen, they make their way into the classroom and sit towards the front since, you know, Aizawa wants both of them to be on their best behavior. But ultimately, a blue haired boy would walk into the classroom and start berating Bakugo, being like, hey, you can't have your feet on the table. This is this, this is disrespectful. This goes against everything. This is UA property. You can't like just going crazy. Right. And Bakugo just looks at him and goes, huh? Why do you have such a big stick up here? As Ida would say, why I never. And Bakugo would say that he's going to enjoy bringing him down a couple pegs, rich kid. As Ida would be like, how dare you? But ultimately, Zuku getting in the middle would smile at Ida and say that he's sorry about that. Looking at Bakugo as he'd be like, whatever. Putting his feet down at the table as Zuku would say, dude, I literally put my neck out there for you. Telling All Might that you'd be a good successor. Start acting like a hero. As Bakugo would say, shut up, it's not my fault all these extras around me aren't acting like I am, I'm just different, what of it? As Izuku would just look at Bakugo and be like, dude, chill out, Aizawa's right there. And Bakugo would just look at him and be like, fine. They would finally stay quiet until eventually Uraraka would walk into the classroom, thanking Izuku profusely for the fact that he saved her life during the entrance exams, and Izuku would see that it was really no problem at all. That robot was pretty weak, as Uraraka would just smile and be like, yeah, weak, right. But Mineta would have actually overheard this as well and been like, what do you mean Zero Pointer was weak? I heard there was some kid that obliterated it in like 10 seconds. Was that you? And Izuku would look at him and say, yeah, it was me, but it was more like four probably. As Mineta hearing that would be like, what a steal off. And Kaminari getting close to him would want to befriend him because, you know, being close to the cool kid kind of makes you cool by proxy. You know what I mean? But right after that would happen, Bakugo smacks uh, Izuku on the back and would just be like, hey, get ready. He's about to wake up. As, you know, he would sit back down on the desk. Aizawa would tell everybody to throw these on and meet him outside. And right after this would happen, they would make their way to take the quirk apprehension test. With Bakugo saying to make sure he doesn't look like a loser out there. As they're in the fitting rooms. And Izuku would say he'll try not to. Having a way too buff physique for his age. As Kaminari, uh, no, 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 not Kaminari, but Kirishima. Seeing this would just be like, dude, you're manly. And Izuku would thank him for that as they would make their way outside and he would go on to have the ball thrown at him as Izuku de decides, okay, I'll throw it. And he would throw it as far as he possibly can, getting infinity, not because he has an uh, you know, anti-gravity quirk, but because he tossed it into space and it, you know, kind of wasn't coming down. So after that would end up happening, we would end up getting everybody else going and the two most impressive candidates, or three technically, would be Uraraka, Izuku, and Katsuki Bakugo because he would be able to use one for all alongside his already insanely powerful explosion quirk. But now it's kind of like on roids because of the fact that Bakugo has one for all's amp on his quirk already. So Bakugo is very overpowered in this version of events. And I'm not going to lie, Bakugo can barely control the quirk at this moment because it's a lot. Like before his explosions were hard to handle, but now they dang near make his bones creak every time that he uses the quirk. And he knows one thing's for sure. He needs to get stronger and fast or else he's going to end up blowing his arm off one of these days. And so after Izuku gets the best scores on some straight up Dragon Ball style, like do you guys remember the tournament where like Vegeta and all of them went to the punching machine and they just straight up shattered it and they were like, these guys are weaklings. That's what would happen, but with Izuku and Bakugo. Both of them end up getting the top scores of the class and everybody else just looks at them and they're like, these guys are literally monsters. 
But after everything would end, Izuku would go over to Aizawa and ask him if he could finally go home today. And Aizawa would say, yeah kid, you deserve it. Izuku would finally end up making his way home, slamming on the bed and just sleeping to the next day. Mind you, he got there at like 4 o'clock, so he slept from 4 to like 8 a.m. the next morning. Which means that he's kind of running late. He'd be like 10 minutes late getting into the class, and because of that, Aizawa would give him a death stare. So Izuku would kind of do the walk of shame to his death as he would finally sit down kind of holding his hands over his head with Kaminara being like don't worry about it dude See, we all run late every now and then Izuku turns back to him and he's just like yeah you're right about that as finally they would have the rest of the school day happen they eventually have lunch yada 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 and eventually we would find ourselves with the heroes versus villains event and All Might would walk in with a cast in his buff state like his arm has a cast on it but he's in his buff state and everybody's like All Might what happened and he's like <laughs> I I fell down the stairs and everyone just falls off their desks and they're just like, are you kidding me? But Izuku and All Might are the only, Izuku, All Might, and Bakugo technically are the only ones aware of what the truth is. Izuku straight up obliterated him. And now that All Bakugo has this new quirk, he thinks to himself that he could probably hang with Izuku. So he wants to fight him, but Izuku's just like, Bakugo, I don't think you're going to be strong enough still. So after school, they're going to fight. But for now, we have 1v1 battles. So All Might would do his regular thing, everybody's fawning over him, and eventually he would tell the class that the clothes make the pros. Following these events, All Might would end up showing everybody to their costumes, and they would all get changed before meeting their meeting him outside, where they would all draw ballots to see who they're gonna be going up against. Once this would happen, unfortunately for everybody else in the class, Izuku would pair up with Katsuki Bakugo. And their opponents, well, it's Kirishima and Sato because I was going to go with Mineta and Momo, but I just felt bad doing Momo like that. So, Kirishima and Sato. The second that they would hear that, bro, Kirishima would be pumped and Sato would be scared. Rightfully so. It's like, dude, you're going against two freaking titans. Like, how are you supposed to feel? You know what I mean? But regardless of the fact, they would end up making their way towards the bomb room because actually, no, let's say that Bakugo and Izuku are the heroes, are the villains, actually. So Kirishima and Sato make their way into the building, and the second that they do, Kirishima would see that Bakugo just kind of sitting there by the door, and Izuku's right behind him, and they're both in this really cool pose where they both have so much aura coming off of them. Immediately seeing this, Kirishima and Sato would kind of like shiver down their spines and then Bakugo would like kind of uh Izuku would whisper to Bakugo he's like am I doing it right and Bakugo's like shut up Deku as you know both of them realizing that they were kind of like trying their best to look cool would start like be like okay you know we have a chance so Kirishima would harden himself and rush towards the direction of Izuku as Izuku realizing that because of his hardening quirk, he could probably punch him a bit harder than usual. So using 1% of his strength, Izuku punches Kirishima to the side of the arm because he would block the blow, but it would still end up shattering his hardening and send him crashing through the wall, knocking him out. As Sato seeing that would immediately chug like three cubes of sugar, causing him to get like really buff as he would rush towards Bakugo. But Bakugo in this moment would be like, out of the way, extra, as he shoots an explosion at him sending him flying down the hallway with both of them being rushed to recovery girl's office where izuku and bakugo would both be like well izuku would apologize for the both of them and bakugo would be like dang it izuku you always have to be such a loser as from here izuku's like dude it's the right thing to do we just hurt those guys and everybody watching this would just be like okay we are so glad that these guys are not villains because if they were we'd all probably be dead but anyways right after that would take place we would finally end up having everybody else do their own thing and we would then cover the next events with izuku and bakugo staying after school as the both of them would actually be going under training by all might or more specifically a one-on-one -on -one battle in which izuku would stare down bakugo kind of looking at him like feeling bad not having like a game face on and bakugo would say dang it izuku how many times do i have to tell you to look at posing look threatening do something damn it deku as izuku hearing this would be like all right fine and he would look at bakugo with like a 
death stare. Suddenly, all the aura in the room would change as purple-like energy would start shooting off of Izuku, and Izuku instantly blitzes behind Bakugo, Bakugo throwing an explosion as he appears in front of him and says, too slow. He would try to attack him again and again and again and again until finally Izuku would grab onto Bakugo's gauntlets since he would try to throw an explosion at him, crush them. As Bakugo holding both of his hands out in front of him would shoot a point blank explosion, the strongest which causes his bones to creak and kind of like injure himself a bit. But Izuku would just stand there, tanking the explosion as he would tell Bakugo if this is serious enough. As he would go on to grab Bakugo by the shoulder and slightly squeeze it, causing Bakugo to fall down onto both knees. As he's like, dang it Izuku, stop! As he's like, damn it! And Izuku would finally calm down going back into his normal state. With All Might being like, what was that Izuku? And Izuku would say that Bakugo asked him to get serious, so... He got serious. Izuku tells him that he was kind of pretending that Bakugo had killed his mom or something to get himself to get hyped up and to like really take this as serious as he could. And All Might hearing that would be like, dude, that's that's insane. Who does that? You know what I mean? But after hearing that, Bakugo would start laughing, pat Izuku on the back and tell him that that's exactly the kind of aura he has to give off. As following this, we would have the events of the USJ. So everybody gets permission slips, just like it used to happen when we would go to school. They go home, they get them signed by their guardians and stuff like that. And finally, we would find ourselves with all the students on the USJ, on the, well, not the USJ bus, but the UA bus, right? As they would make their way straight there, and eventually we would have Pro Hero 13 make an acquaintance with the students. She would go on to explain to everybody what the rules are, and right after this would take place, we would see purple mist appear in the center of everything. As this would happen, and Kirishima would say, wow, fake villains! After Aizawa would say, these aren't fake villains, and Izuku could sense the seriousness of the situation, taking into account all the training that he's had taken place with Endeavor, Izuku would shoot a blast of Hakai energy straight towards the direction of Shigaraki as like Izuku would cut what would would see that all the energy went through him and that it didn't actually touch Kurigiri right but seeing that Izuku was extremely dangerous Kurigiri would teleport him out of there straight toward another section the section with the boats but Izuku instead of falling into the water would just kind of float and fly above it all as he would stare down Kuragiri who had just teleported him away flying back in front of him as he would grab onto the metal thing that Kuragiri has spinning it in mid-air before slamming him into the ground causing Kuragiri to be completely taken out of the battle meaning that he won't be able to like summon or to teleport all the other students away right so right after this would happen and Izuku would proceed to look around analyzing the situation as he could see exactly where the boss was and tell Aizawa to keep the students safe as he would fly towards the direction of, of Shigaraki and the Nomu and Shigaraki would say, dang it, we didn't know there would be somebody like you here. As Izuku would say, guess what, the world didn't either, but now I'm here. As you know, it sounded cringy because it was supposed to sound cringy. Like, Izuku was still learning how to be cool and imposing and, like, give off really cool one-liners. That's why it's supposed to be, like, kind of corny. But Shigaraki hearing that would be like, uh, as you know, he kind of just looks at Izuku and then the Nomu would punch Izuku square in the jaw being like, did you feel that? He has the power of all might. As Izuku says, what exactly is this? And Shigaraki goes on to explain that that's a Nomu. It's a creature that he created. And Izuku would go on to say, so it's not a human being, right? As Shigaraki would say, <laughs> it was. And after hearing this, Izuku would get angry at the fact that that thing used to be a human, but clearly it isn't anymore. So Izuku would say, I'm sorry, but I'll grant you mercy. As he would shoot an energy beam, not a Hakai beam, straight at the direction of this Nomu, obliterating it, just destroying the Nomu out of existence. As Shigaraki seeing this would be like, but that was our most powerful, before Izuku you know, stands before Shigaraki and just kind of like slaps him. He straight up slaps him into the ground, causing Shigaraki to slide throughout the dirt and Izuku would give a death stare to the remaining villains who all literally just like they deactivate their quirks and say we yield 
As Izuku standing in the middle of all of this, Aizawa would crack a smile thinking to himself that that kid really did learn everything he taught him. Take care of the situation quick. Make sure that you don't waste time. Don't play games. These are villains, not people with sad backstories. They, they, they made their choices and now they have to face the consequences. And as I would be extremely proud of Izuku, genuinely, as after this would happen, Izuku would pretty much be praised by Nezu for handling the situation so well. And Bakugo would just kind of be sitting up there being like, huh, guess I got some catching up to do. Not like I couldn't have taken out that freak, but I figured I'd let you have this one. Especially since my arms are kind of out of commission for a bit, since you kind of destroyed them a bit and izuki would be like what what do you mean i destroyed them you shot a full power explosion in my face had it been anybody else you might have straight up killed them and bakugo's like yeah yeah but it was you so you'll be fine as izuki would say yeah yeah whatever well you guys better tune in for part three because this is where the video's done and with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm done. You know, I recorded a bit, but I do got to go shoot some hoops. You know, got to go lose some more weight. I'm down 20 pounds. Your boy's going to get back down to 200. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, that's not the only thing I have to tell you guys. Make sure to leave a like on the video and go leave a like on the previous part if you didn't do so. So we can help out the algorithm. Leave a comment for that as well. And have an amazing day. God bless.